Hello there and welcome. I'm Ole Brugger and if you're new here, I really hope I'll earn your subscription today. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I 3D print miniatures. Just some simple miniatures that I'm gonna run on my table in my D&D campaign. And while we're talking about printing miniatures, Cheeto Systems was so kind to send me this load of resin. And recently, I've become a huge fan of printing in black. We'll get back to that later why. A while ago, they also sent me this Hoopad X4, and I have not used any other tanks since. And at that time, they also sent me this Conjure Rigid. And I've tried it, but that time it was in grey, and I really love the texture and the resolution of it, and even more, the flexibility. And it is what it says, it's rigid. But let's try it out and let's get started. I need a lot of customized NPCs for my D&D campaign with some very special features. So I went to Hero Forge and made a bunch of NPCs. And this is one of the NPCs my players will encounter. Is a rogue, but is he good or is he evil? Well, you maybe find out in a future video where I'm going to build something special for all these NPCs. And here are all my NPCs for this print. There will be a couple of extra miniatures on the build plate, but this is the main characters I'm going to focus on. Now I just need to download the STL files for these minis, and then we can have a look at my slice tool. I have imported all the STL files into Sheetobox which is a slicing tool I use for my 3D printer. I have already added some support through the auto support tool, and it actually works great, but sometimes you need to add some more. So I'll add some manual support just to make sure that everything will print correctly. And in Shooter Box, you can actually see all the yellow zones is overhangs where it's almost impossible for the printer to make a correct bridge. Like here on the cloak, so I'll just add some minor light supports. I always try to avoid putting supports directly into the face or detailed parts of the miniature. And the auto support tool actually has some tendency to do that sometimes. But it's not intelligent, so it doesn't know what's important and how things should look. So sometimes I have to remove a couple of supports and then I have to add something new. All the supports have been sorted out and now it's time to slice. But first I'll need to change a couple of settings on the resin before we're ready to slice all the models. I have tried to print with the Conjure Rigid Grey before. That was the first bottle that Shito System sent me. And I've just made a copy of the settings and made a Conjure Rigid Black. When printing with black or dark resin, you quite often need to increase the exposure time. And it's not much, I'll just increase it with 0.3 seconds and then it should be okay. And maybe some of you who's watching this video know that there has been some issues about this bottom exposure time and people can't agree on how things should be set. Someone wants it to be 18 to 20 because they are afraid that the models will just stick too hard on the build plate and difficult to get off. Elego, on the other hand, recommends that you sometimes set it all the way up to 75 seconds. I think that's too much, but 55 seconds works for me. I have run this on 30. I had a couple of models that fell off the build plate. I tried 45 and it worked fine. I still had something that didn't attach quite well. So 55 for me is the sweet spot when I'm printing, especially with the black resins. If it's gray, I can easily run it on 45, maybe 40 seconds. But I have set it to 55 seconds here. And that's pretty much it. If you're interested, you can see how my other settings are. There's not much to say about all these. And here we can see all the basics for the print, how much resin we are going to use in weight and milliliters, and the price. The price don't 
count on that because I have not set up uh, any prices on any resin. Most important, we have a print time. So almost two hours and I think that's acceptable. These minis are not that tall, but if you're printing a larger model, it will increase. The time will increase on the height of the miniature. And here we can see all the layers. We can just pull the slider down and we can see each and every layer the printer is going to print. 1027 layers. And then we can see save. I'll just save the file to my desktop and put it on a USB stick. I know I'm old fashioned, but my Wi-Fi connection in my workshop isn't that great and I don't want to send it to the printer directly, even though it is possible. Let's head out to the workshop and start printing. It is always nice to pour up some new resin in a clean tank. And as you can see here, I'm using G2 Systems Hoopad X4 tank. And the print took exactly two hours. Let's see how they turned out. Well, it's a bit hard to see because they are all wet by resin, but we are going to clean them up. But I think it turned out flawlessly. Let's pop them off the plates and put them in the basket and give them a bath in isopropyl alcohol. If you notice here, I have two tank cleaners. One I use for the dirty stuff and then I can extend the lifetime on my isopropyl alcohol. The other one is what I call the clean tank and I will show you how I use that later. Usually I give them about 10 minutes in the IPA, but first I pour up some boiled water in this box and dump all the miniatures into the boiled water. The reason why I do this is when they are hardened up, it's very hard to remove the supports and the supports will leave some awful markings. Putting them in hot water will just make it a lot easier to remove the supports. It basically just falls off the miniature. And then you might ask, why don't you just use water washable resin then? I have to say, I'm not a fan of water washable resins. I have tried several types and brands and the thing they all have in common all the miniatures will become very fragile when they are hardened up. The resolution is okay on water washable, but I think they are just too fragile. And when I'm using it for tabletop gaming, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't want my miniatures to go and break. Most of the supports are now gone and then I put the miniatures into my clean tank. After removing the supports, the miniatures is more exposed and it's easier to clean out the leftover resin that didn't harden. I actually had one miniature that failed. This guy, he lost his arm. But it was not because of the resin or the printer. It was actually a lack of support. This arm, I just didn't see it. It wasn't supported at all. So he will have to live in the trash can. I have to print him later. I need him. I set the miniatures to dry for half an hour and that was enough to remove the last of the isopropyl alcohol. And look at these awesome miniatures. I still need to clean up a couple of supports, but look at the details on this little one. And the supports, they still remove pretty easy. I can just pull it off and they barely leave a mark. And look at this big filler. A half orc. This is what I'm talking about. The flexibility. It doesn't break. And I have tried a lot of different types of resin before. All that with 4K, 8K and 12K resins. And maybe this Conjure Rigid has a lower resolution. I don't know. I just can't tell the difference. And the reason why I print in black and like that is when I paint it, if something should chip off, it's still black and not leave a gray spot there. I just need to clean up the rest of the supports and then we have to go to the curing station. I just spread them all over the base and now I just need to put on the lid because this light is very powerful and bad for your eyes. I set the timer to 4 minutes. You don't want to overcook them. If you do so, they will become fragile no matter what kind of resin you are using. 
All the minis are now cured and they're getting ready to be put on some bases. I have something special in mind, that's why there's no bases on these. And look at this, even after curing, they still have some flexibility and they are very rigid. This was the process on how I print miniatures. And I want to say thank you to Shito Systems for sending me these awesome resins. If you want to buy them yourself, I have a couple of affiliate links in the description below. And if you want to know more about the Hoopad X4, you can just click the link up here. I have a video about that too. This is it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon.